Okay, we're gonna talk about O2 consumption, CaO2 minus CvO2, oxygen content difference or AV difference, and cardiac output and the relationship between the three. So you have the systemic arteries that are carrying oxygenated blood out to the tissues and returned the oxygenated through the veins back to the heart. And so if we look at the AV difference and the effect of O2 consumption, as the cells consume oxygen, pull oxygen off of the hemoglobin, the more they pull off, say the consumption went up maybe from fever or sepsis or something like that, the more they consume, the less it gets returned. In, this, in a similar way, uh, you put food out on the table, the more people eat, the less you bring back to the kitchen. The less people eat, the more you bring back to the kitchen. So as the cells consume more oxygen, this gets less on the venous side, making the difference between CaO2 and CVO2 greater. So the more the consumption, the bigger the AV difference. So that's the effect that O2 consumption has on the AV difference. So if we actually looked at two lists of things that, one uh, list of things that affect O2 consumption and another list that lists things that affect AV difference, those lists would be the same for the reasons I just talked about. But there would be one thing on what affects AV difference that's not on the O2 consumption list, and that is cardiac output. Cardiac output has an effect on AV difference, but not consumption. In other words, in this example now, we're gonna keep O2 consumption at a constant. There's nothing going on except basic metabolism. The cellular requirement for oxygen is gonna stay the same through this example. And so if we look at differences in cardiac output and how that affects AV difference, uh, let's first talk about why it doesn't affect O2 consumption. That's because the cells have an oxygen requirement that is what it is. And how much cardiac output that's going by doesn't change the requirement in the same way that how much food is put in front of you doesn't affect how much food your cells need. But cardiac output, while it doesn't have an effect on O2 consumption, it does have an effect on AV difference for this reason. Let's use the example of decrease cardiac output first. So think about it. This is moving through. There's a lot less output going through. It's moving a lot slower. The, the, uh, the output is very low. So these hemoglobin, each individual hemoglobin is going to be out in the tissues longer. And while the cellular requirement for oxygen doesn't change in this example, if these guys are out here longer, they're gonna get more oxygen picked off of them, therefore return less. And if the CVO2 goes down, if the venous values go down, then the difference between the venous and what you started with on CaO2 gets greater. So decreased cardiac output will increase the AV difference because these hemoglobin get more picked off. Not because the cells are consuming more, but it's a function of time, how long each individual one of these is out there. The opposite is also true. Increased cardiac output. Now this is moving real fast. In this example, our cells are requiring the exact same amount of oxygen. It's a constant, but let's pick this guy. He's gonna whip through there real fast. The cellular requirement is the same. They're gonna pull the same amount off, but this guy's gonna get through with less picked off of him because he's not out there as long. They're gonna pull off from a bigger variety of red blood cells and hemoglobin. So that is why cardiac output affects AV difference, but not O2 consumption.